So one of the things I love the most about gardening is that it lets me disconnect from my technology addiction. Today I threw all of that out the window, and I'm gonna tell you why. So earlier today, I was getting ready to film a completely different video. And then something hit me. I wasn't ready. I had a few really basic, but also time-consuming tasks that I needed to do before I was ready to actually film that video and show you, hey, here's what I'm doing. And one of those things was a fairly simple, but time-consuming task, which was identifying the specific capsicum species of every pepper variety that I'm growing this year. I'm growing like 185 varieties of peppers this year, so that was gonna take a while for ones that I didn't know offhand. I got frustrated after filling in about 10 of those, <laughs> to be honest, and I went out and took my dog for a walk. While I was out walking, I had a weird epiphany and I was like, you know, you idiot, there's generative AI these days and that could probably do a lot to help simplify that task. I wasn't really sure what to expect from generative AI, especially for something like assigning a capsicum species to all kinds of obscure different pepper varieties. But whoa, I for one, I'm ready to welcome our new AI overlords. I had an amazing experience where I used Google Gemini and I gave it my grow list and it correctly applied a species to 185 varieties of chili pepper. I was blown away, to be honest. I expected it to get maybe some right, have no clue on others, but Gemini nailed it. And so I started thinking, okay, that just saved me hours of manual work. What else can I do with AI for my garden? And so what I'm gonna do in this video today is show you a little bit of this AI rabbit hole I went down that is absolutely going to change the way that I plan, plant, and manage my garden going forward. This is really cool stuff. Go ahead and give this video a like if you're interested. Leave me a comment below on anything else you might wanna see, and I am gonna get right into it. And so the first thing I'm gonna to do today is just show you the very basics, right? So this is Google Gemini. I'm gonna ask it a really simple question. What is my average last frost date and I'm going to use my zip code here so that I know specific to me. Let's just see what it says because I can get this on Google. I can get this on the Almanac. All right. It's given me a pretty good answer here. It gives me an example of the Denver area in general and then it gets really into the specifics about my zip code, what I need to be thinking about and just that in our specific climate, it's common that we have late frosts or extreme weather. And so maybe just because that's our average last frost date, I might want to give it another week or two for a buffer. That's pretty good information, right? Pretty basic, but this is just me asking Gemini a simple question. And it gave me a lot more information in one concise and well-organized answer than I would have got if I just went to Google. If I just went to Google and put what is my average last frost date, I would have got either May 11th or May 4th, depending on which source it pointed at. So AI was a little bit helpful there. But now let's look at that use case that I mentioned in the intro that I think is pretty darn cool. So I'm gonna put into Gemini, below is a list of pepper varieties. Please make a chart showing the specific capsicum species for each. And I'm gonna paste my grow list here. Absolutely, creating a chart of pepper varieties and their capsicum species is a great way to organize information. Okay, cool. So it didn't, it didn't work that first try. That was weird. Let's try it again. So it didn't like that prompt for some reason or Gemini didn't respond, so I'm gonna try it again real quick. Maybe because I said table this time instead of chart. It's challenging to be absolutely certain of the capsicum species for some of these varieties, especially those that are crosses or have less common names. However, I can give you a table of the most likely species based on common knowledge and available information. Look at this. So I need to go back through and obviously do some spot checking. And at first glance, it looks really good. I'll do a deep analysis and make sure that I correct anything that might be a little bit wrong, but that just saved me hours of work. I mean, honestly, hours of work. And what's even cooler is at the bottom, it gives me this key and I can export this right to Google Sheets, right? So I can take this and copy it right into my master spreadsheet that I use to track my garden every year. I can't say enough about how excited this has me. It, it's nerdy, but I'm already saving time and I'm doing what I love to do, which is cataloging everything about everything I'm growing. 
Let's give it another challenge though. I'm also growing more tomatoes this year than I ever had before, and so I thought, what if I give it my tomato list and ask it to classify them as indeterminate and determinate? Below is a list of tomato varieties. Make a table showing whether each is a determinate or indeterminate variety. And include a column of notes. Why not? I'm gonna paste my tomato list in here. Okay, took about 10 seconds to start populating a table. And now we've got a three column table. It shows the tomato variety, the determinate or indeterminate status, and then some notes. It didn't fill in too many notes, but like purple GMO tomato, it calls out that it's genetically modified for anthocyanin production. That's pretty cool. So it knew what I was talking about just by having purple tomato GMO as the name of it. Another win for AI right here. But then I had a thought, what if that table actually had another column in it that told me what color they ripen to? So let's try that. Add a column to the table that shows the ripe color of each tomato variety. Look at that. So now we've got the same table, the same information, and it has another column that shows the color that they'll ripen to. And now I'm gonna try and add one more piece of information to this table. What is the average days to maturity? Okay, this is a huge win. I just built out a very detailed table about all the tomatoes that I'm gonna grow that tells me if they're a determinate or an indeterminate, it tells me what color they're gonna ripen to, and it tells me the average days to maturity. That's incredible. Jim and I did this in a matter of seconds. That would have taken me at least an hour or two to combine from all the different sources. I would have had to Google each variety, look up its information, put it into the spreadsheet. Done. I'm starting to think maybe AI is gonna be a really good tool for my garden planning. So after doing that, I kind of want to do another experiment here. We're going to do this live because I'm having fun at this point to see what else is possible. So let's see if I can do this with the peppers, but make a more uh, detailed chart right off the bat. Below is a list of pepper varieties. Create a table showing the specific capsicum species of each. What color they ripen to and the approximate heat level of each pepper on a scale of one to two million Scoville heat units. All right, so we can see it's starting to build a table. It has four columns, pepper variety, capsicum species, ripe color, and heat level. That is awesome. So many of these are very obscure pepper varieties. I'm a little bit dubious that it can get things like heat level. Just kind of looking around, I see some things that I don't trust necessarily it's still building the table so i'll give it a few more seconds but like it's overestimating a few things from my first glance as far as heat level goes um but that's okay right uh, nobody has tested almost any of these varieties so it's really just going to be scraping sites or reviews for these peppers trying to see if they say anything in the seed information about like expected heat levels really hard to get that right but still pretty cool i built a four column table across 100 and some odd, 112, I think, varieties in this particular list. And it gave me all that information in less than one minute. Gemini, Gemini, we got a few more things that I wanna ask it because I just got so many ideas coming up here. So let's take one more look at something a little different. I'm growing sugar snap peas for the first time in a long time this year, and I'm gonna ask it a few questions about that. I am growing sugar snap peas this year in my garden in 80015 when should I plant those seeds and should I plant them directly in the garden or start them indoors? So it tells me I can plant these directly out in the garden. Um, and it says direct sowing allows the roots to establish themselves naturally. That's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go follow this advice. I will start them here in, looks like late April and find out how they grow for me. One other question though, I'm gonna have these growing up a trellis. So I'm a little bit worried that they might shade out other crops. So I'm gonna ask Gemini, should I grow these on the Northern side of my garden? Sugar snap peas thrive in full sun, which means they need at least six hours of direct sunlight per day. If you plant them on the north side of your garden, they could be shaded by taller plants. However, when I look down at the bottom here, 
Planting peas on the north side of your garden can be effective if the peas are trellised and therefore the peas will not cast shade onto other plants. The freaking AI understands the idea of not wanting to put shade on your other plants when you trellis peas. I did not tell it that I was going to grow them on a trellis. But it thought, hey, just in case you trellis these things and you want to put them on the north side of your garden, that would be good because they won't cast a shadow on the rest of your plants. That's genuinely good gardening advice coming from a robot. Do you think this thing can do garden layouts? Create a diagram showing how I could arrange these plants. All right, that's not the best diagram. It took my 18 varieties and made it into six varieties, three of each. And then it said, hey, you can plant A, B, C, D, E, F. Cool, I could have never figured that out on my own. Thanks, Gemini. What if I have a mix of pepper plants, tomatoes, basil, and marigolds? Okay, so it did give me these little diagrams. They're like text-based diagrams, and it kind of just shows like, here, put a tomato and a basil, here, put pepper and marigolds, here, put tomato and basil. It's okay. This isn't something, I guess, at this point that I'm going to be like, hey, I'm going to have this thing arrange my garden beds because it's just not doing anything too awesome in this case. I wonder if it can actually make me a visual representation. And look at that. It made a cute little drawing. Um, lots of basil. Different types of basil. I see like Thai basil, maybe. Definitely some marigolds. Definitely some tomatoes. There needs to be a lot more peppers in this bed, though. This is the Boss Grows channel. Come on, AI. Uh, let's see. There needs to be more peppers in that image. <laughs> All it did was make it a 3D view. Uh, so, I mean, there's, I guess, a couple of peppers in here. Pretty marigolds, nice drawings. Good job, Gemini. Didn't really understand the assignment, but it's kind of cool that it actually did put, like, trellis in here. It saw tomatoes, thought maybe they'd need to climb. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more task because there's one thing every year in my garden planning that I kind of suck at doing because it's just, it's tedious and I don't feel like it, okay? <laughs> and that is really plotting out when on like a calendar or a timeline, when I should plant each of my different types of crops, knowing that some of them have to start X amount of weeks before last frost date, knowing that some of them take a long time to get to maturity, some of them don't. Some things need to be direct planted out in the garden while others I actually do need to start inside early. So let's see if Gemini can help with this. Ideal state, I would love if it can output like a calendar with dates like here, plant your tomatoes here, plant your peppers here, plant your cucumbers here, or even a Gantt chart, you know, where it's like rows, almost like in a project plan. Let's see what we can figure out. I am planting a garden with peppers, tomatoes, Cucumbers, um, watermelon, what else am I growing? Cantaloupe, got to spell cantaloupes right. It's gonna do it for me. Zucchini, zinnias, let's go to the flowers. Zinnias, sunflowers, basil, oregano, cilantro, thyme, lemon balm. What else zinni? Oh, I already put zinnias in. Well, let's leave it in there. Let's do it twice, see what happens. Balloon flowers, columbine flowers, strawberries. Why not? I mean, these are all things I'm growing in my garden for real. I would like you to create a schedule of when to plant each of these plant types based on last frost date and average time to maturity. Let's go. Okay, so it starts talking about my zip code and the unique challenges. It says, well, May 10th is about the last frost. It's usually better to wait till the 20th. Good advice. Uh, it says our growing season is short, our altitude is impactful, and our soil is clay-like and alkaline. All true. Planting schedule. So now it's breaking it down like peppers, eight to 10 weeks before last frost, tomatoes, six to eight weeks before last frost, cantaloupes, four to six, watermelon, four to six, zucchini, three to four. So that's everything indoor, but then it actually breaks it out and says direct sowing after last frost. So these are the things I can put right in the garden. Cucumbers, sunflowers, basil, oregano, cilantro, thyme. I'll usually start my basil indoors. I'll probably start my lemon balm indoors too, because I want them to get big. But in important considerations, it tells me, hey, make sure you harden these things off. 
Um, so that's pretty cool, right? But not exactly what I was hoping for. This is just the textual information, which again, having it all consolidated here is awesome. I like the simplified version here, lower down though, like mid-March to early April, start peppers, tomatoes, cantaloupes, watermelons, zinnias, balloon flowers, late May to early June. You can direct sow cucumbers, sunflowers, basil, oregano, cilantro, thyme. Um, and then throughout summer, it even says continue succession planting cilantro, cucumbers, and zucchini. So that's nice, right? It's, it's paying attention to real good gardening advice and saying, here's what you plant indoors and when, here's what you plant outdoors after frost, and then here's things that you should plant all year to make sure you always have them fresh. Great advice. You can never have enough cilantro, so plant it throughout the summer. Uh, but this isn't exactly what I'm looking for, right? So I'm going to see if I can make this a little bit more useful and see if I can prompt it to give me a graphical representation of this like I'm looking for. Uh, so let's see, based on my last prompt, I guess we will try, can you make me a visual, a schedule, or chart of the above planting schedule? I can't create a visual chart directly, but I can provide you with a text-based table. Okay, so now it took that same information, put it in a table. That's a little bit easier to read. That is good. Like, don't get me wrong. Again, if I was doing this myself, that would have taken me probably 20, 30 minutes to compile. But it's still not what I want. Can you put the seed planting dates for each of these on a calendar for 2025? Sorry, something went wrong. So I'm thinking maybe AI is not completely ready to draw me a calendar or a Gantt chart like I want, but it did give me a really concise look at that information by plant type and says, here's the dates when you should be starting that. I could add then the information that I already have that Gemini gave me for average days of maturity, and I could easily put these on a calendar myself or put them on a Gantt chart myself. In the end, I gotta say that was actually super useful. And if I go down when I have my full garden plan done here tomorrow, I'm gonna come back into Gemini and put that list in there again and get a chart made just like it showed me. So I know in one quick glance, hey, here's what I'm planting. And I'm gonna go onto my calendar that I just keep on my Google account, right? so my phone will remind me, hey, March 5th, you better be planting the annuum peppers. And maybe it's you know March 20th, you better be planting those tomatoes. I'm excited. I did not expect today to be a technology day. I thought it was going to be hands in dirt, planting pepper seeds, talking about my garden organization system, and making a video about that. And here I am today instead talking about how much AI just blew my mind and showed me things that I didn't think I would care about or think that I would be looking to get assistance with because I knew how to do them. I just, I wasn't doing them often because they take a lot of time and I'm kind of lazy. Gemini just saved that. I, in whatever this video ends up being, you know, 20 minutes or so, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Looks like I've been talking for a while. I just did a day plus worth of work. And I didn't do anything, I just typed. Gemini did the work for me. I'm sure ChatGPT or other AI models would do just as good, maybe even better than this. If you wanna see me do a video about other AI models and how they could help gardening or compare garden information from one AI model to another, let me know. I will, because this has got me super psyched. I was dreading these tasks, and seriously, my grow list by the time I go to bed here in a few hours is gonna be perfectly filled out. I'm gonna have all the details I need so I know how to lay out my garden and when to plant each seed, and I didn't have to do all the work. This is a game changer for me. If you wanna see more about how I start seeds, you can check this video here. If you wanna see more about some of the common mistakes people make when they're starting seeds, you can check this video here. Please give me a like, leave a comment below. That helps this channel so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell. You will never miss another one of these videos. Remember, plants help us grow.